In this video, we're going to be talking about Kubernetes pods, replica sets, and deployments. Let's get started. So a pod is the smallest computing unit that you can deploy into Kubernetes, and it's usually made up of one or more containers. So here's where you would have your application code and logic. But to understand when a pod would be used, think of a microservices architecture. Now, each microservice within the broader set of microservices could be powered by a pod. And you wouldn't necessarily want to put multiple microservices into the same pod because you would want to have that modularity and the ability to scale each component individually of one another. But how would you actually deploy a pod into Kubernetes? We'll get started with that first. Okay, so what we have here is a Kubernetes manifest file. And this essentially tells Kubernetes how to deploy something, in this case, a pod. So let's take it from the top. So we've got an API version. This is gonna tell Kubernetes which version of its API it should use to deploy this object. I'll be honest, I usually look this one up. It's usually v1 or apps slash v1. Next, the kind of object you're deploying, it's a pod. Then we have some metadata that uh, uniquely identifies this object. Uh, now the meat of it is the, the spec, the specification of this pod. What are the containers within this pod? And so we have one container, it's a hello app, that image is hosted on a registry somewhere, it can be a public registry, a private registry, you could use something like Elastic Container Registry, ECR on AWS. Uh, in addition, we have some ports. Uh, this is actually purely informational. You don't necessarily even need to define the port for something like a pod or a deployment. It's just nice to have so that the next person that finds this, or maybe for yourself, to know what uh, ports this application is listening on. Okay, but pods are usually not used. They're rarely used because they're considered ephemeral and disposable. Uh, you generally wanna use something like a deployment or even a replica set. Let's take a look at what that would look like. Okay, so now that we have this Kubernetes deployment YAML written out, one of the first things you'll likely notice is that a lot of it's the same from the pod specification. And that's because the deployment uses it as a template for creating the pods. Now let's take it from the top. Now there's an API version again, the kind of object is deployment, the metadata to uniquely identify it. And in the spec for the deployment, we're saying we want three replicas. And the selector, this piece is interesting, it tells Kubernetes how to identify which pods fall under the purview of the deployment. So this kind of match labels is gonna make sure that it matches uh, any artifact with the labels app colon my app. And so that's how Kubernetes knows that these pods belong to this deployment. Uh, but there's actually this other layer here between a deployment and the pods. Now, generally you wouldn't create replica sets manually. Uh, a deployment's gonna automatically create a replica set for you, and this manages the scale and the health of the pods. In case one of them goes down, it'll bring up another, or should change the number of replicas. The deployment is gonna get those advantages, but you're using a deployment for the fact that you can make declarative updates to the config. Say as an ops team, you wanna roll out a new version of the app, so you change just the container image, which forces all the pods to kinda of get refreshed. Uh, or maybe you wanna change the number of replicas. Deployment's gonna handle that for you and make the necessary changes. In addition, it's great for things like rollovers, rollouts, rollbacks, uh, which can enable you to roll out new versions of an application or roll them back uh, without downtime. But how exactly is Kubernetes able to manage the life cycle of these objects? Well, it uses a controller mechanism, uh, also known as a control loop. Let's kind of take a look at what that looks like. So the first thing Kubernetes is gonna do is gonna observe maybe some of the config that you've passed in. Uh, but the more interesting piece, I think, is when it runs a diff. So this control loop is gonna check if the config matches the state of the world. Let's say we updated something here, uh, bumped up the replicas from three to four. So it's gonna identify that that changed, and the next thing it'll do is it's gonna act on it. This essentially is the control loop, uh, and it's how Kubernetes handles the life cycle of these objects and kind of the self-healing nature of containers within Kubernetes. Uh, and so of course here we would see another pod come up. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. It was a quick overview of Kubernetes pods, replica sets, and deployments. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. Thank you.